This is Talk of Asian Marketing with a special emphasis on localized Chinese consumer behavior. Our website is ccc.qbook.tv, where you can find other audio and video episodes with photos, links, and information related to today's conversation. Subscribe to leave comments and access research episodes with applied topics and research reports. Talk of Asian Marketing. We have a special trip today because we're going outside to have some fun. The only bad part is the weather's not too good. Mm -hmm. Steven? Yes. Cold? Yeah. <laughs> Feel cold? Yeah, feel cold. <laughs> you know, uh, Hong Kong and Taiwan, I think, are similar this way. They don't really get cold. It never really snows, but it no. feels cold. Uh -huh. People say it's because of the moisture. Yeah. Too humid. Too humid. Okay, well, we are at the Taichung High Speed Rail Station, and behind us you can see the station stretches back here quite a ways, real nice. And this was finished in what year was it finished? 2007? Two uh, seven years. 2007. Uh -huh. And where are the big stations at? Taipei? No, I mean, uh, I, I think it should be uh, in Kaohsiung. Kaohsiung. Yeah. Kaohsiung is the biggest station? Yeah, maybe. Interesting. And, but this one is also very big. This is pretty yeah. big. Yeah. yeah. So the, the stations are Kaohsiung, Taichung, Taipei? Yes, and uh, some kind of uh, uh, Taoyuan, Tainan. Taoyuan, Taoyuan. Yeah, Xinzhu. Yeah. Xinzhu, the big important technology places, uh -huh, right? Yeah. It's real nice, real modern. It looks like an airport, doesn't it? Yeah, just by an uh, airport. In yeah. fact, I think it looks better than the, than the Taiwan airport. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, well, uh, let's talk a little bit, Stephen, because maybe our viewers don't know some of the transportation situations. Now, if you go to Hong Kong mm -hmm. for many, many years, I think since the early 70s, they've had a very advanced subway. Subway, yeah. Tube system, right? Yeah. Now, the tube system is very interesting. Cause I read a story. I don't know if you've heard about this. Of course, it's very troublesome to build that. Mm -hmm. You've got to dig under the ground, right? Yes. But because Hong Kong was basically a British dictatorship, <laughs> they could demand to have it done, uh -huh. and they made this great system. Uh -huh. Taiwan's a little bit more difficult. Uh, a little bit, yeah, because the land, uh, the land law, mm -hmm. a lot of uh, trouble in uh, uh, getting the land. Getting the land, yeah. Yeah, yeah very difficult. Uh -huh. Expensive, at least, to yeah. say the least. So they had to get a lot of land for this system, which is the high-speed rail. So in Taiwan, we've been a little bit more behind Hong Kong, I think. And then China is another step yes. behind that, uh -huh. pretty far behind, I think. Yeah, yeah, but, but uh, um, China right now is um, progress. progressing. Yeah. progressing. I think when I ride on this train, it reminds me of the high-speed rail from Shanghai yes. to the Shanghai airport. Uh -huh. And that's a uh, mono rail. Yep. A maglev, yeah, really, yep. really neat. Uh -huh. But I, I've ridden on this train a couple of times. It's really great fun. Now let's remind our viewers who maybe have been here before or haven't been here. In Taiwan, when you wanted to get around, when I first came here in the '80s, there was one way, and that was called the wild chicken bus. <laughs> why? Uh, can you tell us what? Why was it called the wild chicken bus? Because you can you uh, uh, um, you can you can get off the bus uh, everywhere or down. Down the, uh, the overpass. I mean, uh, uh, in fact, I remember in in the maybe late 80s, I would take the bus and you just tell them, I want to get off. Yes. They stop on the side of the highway yes. and you just jump off and you got to go down the on ramp by, by foot. <laughs> so basically, they, they take you anywhere, but they, they were illegal, right? No, uh, they, was illegal uh, they were illegal because the, uh, at that time, uh, the government controlled the. Uh, uh, take the control of the transportation. I mean, the the, uh, the bus uh, uh, was uh, administrated by the government. They so there was a legal one, but that was the government one. Yep. Uh -huh. I, I mean, uh, um, the um, the bus company uh, had to get a license from the government to run their business at that time, and this kind of. Uh, a chicken, wild chicken, uh, wild bus. chicken bus, <laughs> uh, run, uh, run their business by their own. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, so it's, uh, it was uh, illegal. Mm -hmm. Then, 
But right now, it's open. To now it's totally open, of course. Uh -huh. But back then it was difficult, and I remember taking the legal buses, and I remember many times, you have this experience, this is back in the late 80s, you go to the window to pay for the bus, and back then there were two kinds of tickets. One was with AC and without AC. <laughs> you remember that, yes. right? Yes. With air conditioning, without air conditioning. Uh -huh. And so I would pay for the without air conditioning, and then the bus is there and you get on, and you know, you get without air conditioning. If it has air conditioning, they don't let you on. But lots of times I pay for the AC, mm -hmm. get on, and there's mm -hmm. no AC. <laughs> right? And then and you can't return your ticket, and they just tell you forget it. And the service was really, really terrible, really, really bad. Uh -huh. uh, the buses were, were very run down. Yeah, and sometimes the, uh, you watch uh, auto control. Yeah. Yeah, uh, during the. Uh, um, 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 the rush hour, so yeah, uh, rush time. Yeah, yeah rush time. Uh, yeah. Some uh, holidays. Yeah, yeah, it's very difficult. Yeah, so it was it was not comfortable at all. And then the wild chicken buses came along, and that slowly developed. It's been legalized, and now we have a great bus system, yeah, way better than in the U.S., which mm -hmm. kind of uh, has disappeared. The bus system. I, mm -hmm. I took. I used to take some Greyhound buses. You've been on buses in the U.S. Yeah, before, haven't yeah. you? And now it's way, way, way better. Hold on. Got a problem? Okay. So now we have these great big buses. They have these great big comfortable seats. Mm -hmm. In fact, in time when you get on a bus, it's a little bit shocking because you sit down and lots of them, one person gets one humongous <laughs> yeah. seat. It always reminds me of a TV show back in America uh, called uh, All in the Family with Archie Bunker. He's just sitting in a big yeah, chair yeah, yeah. and uh, it's really comfortable. Yeah, uh, yeah and you can have a uh, personal uh, monitor to see the movie. LCD screen yeah, yeah, right yeah. there on your chair, and some of them are such great service. You have a shell jay comes over and gives you tea or coffee, right? Uh, 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 huh? Yeah, but it's not always. Uh, no, no, no. Yeah, no, some uh, of them are. Though. I'm yeah, surprised. Um, I think there should be uh, a space over during the time because the, uh, com uh, the bus company uh, encounters some problems. A lot of competition. Yeah, a lot of competition. Uh, it's like doing the SARS. They were hard yes. to get people on the bus. They have to offer a lot of discount, things like that. Uh, yeah, very interesting. So things have really changed a lot. Now, this high-speed rail has caused some changes, too, because it was just about 10 years ago in Taiwan, all of a sudden we had a lot of domestic airplanes. Yes. And I remember flying from Taichung to Hualien, which is on the other side of the mountain. The price was really cheap. We're talking maybe uh, 50, 60 US dollars. I could fly over there and fly back. And it was just a real short flight. But now, because of the high-speed rail, this is uh, getting all wiped out, right? Um, yeah. Um, during, um, yeah, you are right. Um, right now, the the, uh, the flight from uh, Taipei to Kaohsiung uh, um, uh, is getting because uh, many people are taking uh, are taking this um, high-speed rail. Cheaper, faster. Uh, faster and uh, many cheaper. A little bit cheaper, not a lot cheaper. Yeah, yeah. So it's a really nice development, and I think that you know, living in Taiwan has become very comfortable transportation-wise, right? Yes. Another thing we haven't mentioned, maybe when we get back on the highway, we can shoot some video or shoot some pictures of it, is the highway system. Yes. Really big changes there. Uh huh. If you have, if you've been in Taiwan before, but it's any time before 2000, 2001, mm -hmm. you haven't really seen the new highway system, which is great. Right. It takes you everywhere really fast. You don't drive much, do you? Uh, sometimes. Sometimes. Because <laughs> we used to drive from Taichung just out to Nanto. It would take us for hours. Now we're out there 40 minutes. Ah, because of the high, uh, high speed uh, road. Yeah, right, uh -huh. right. The uh, number three highway. Yeah. So uh, I'll post a picture. I have a nice picture on my website. And I have some relatives back home. I, you know, they know I've been living here 20 years and they they just, I think their picture was Taiwan's a real backward place. And I took a picture up on the mountainside near here in Zhanghua. You can see the number three highway, the number one, and the high speed rail, and the mm -hmm. old rail mm -hmm. all coming together. And right. I sent it and I said, hey, look at this. And they said, wow, I didn't know you lived in such a developed place. <laughs> <laughs> so the high speed rail is kind of the apex of transportation development in Taiwan. Really comfortable, really fast. Stephen just came in. How was your ride? Comfortable? Yeah, comfortable. Yeah. Fast? Yeah, fast? How long from Kaohsiung to Taichung? Uh, one hour. No way. One hour from Kaohsiung? I thought it was one yes. hour from Tainan. No, one hour from Kaohsiung. 
That's great. Yeah. That's great. Mm -hmm. An hour from Taichung to Taipei, maybe shorter. Last time you and me came back from Taipei, we were so fast, I yeah. forgot. And I forgot to call my wife to come pick me up, and she didn't like that very much. And that was like uh, 45 minutes, I think, 15 um, minutes. Yeah, the best one uh, uh, would be uh, one, uh, one and thirty, one and thirty hours uh, from from Kaohsiung uh, to, to Taipei. All the way from Kaohsiung to Taipei, an yes. hour and a half. Yes. Wow. Okay. So things are really developing good. You know, it's things like this that make it hard for me to, uh, you know, jump from Taiwan to China, huh? Because uh, right now in China, during the pre-New Year celebration, uh -huh. it's just packed everywhere. Yes. In fact, Anthony was telling me that the train station downtown in Shanghai is always packed. Yep, yep. <laughs> so not so easy. Okay, we'll wrap it up here. Okay. Here we are, Talk of Asian Marketing, and we are inside the Taiwan High Speed Rail Station. And James, you just came in. I just came in. It was another really smooth trip, Clyde. Smooth. You know, like, uh, like I have each time, to be honest. It was real fast, real easy. Buy the ticket straight onto the train. Mm -hmm. And boy, I worked for 40 really nice quality minutes and had 40 a, minutes yeah good quality cup of coffee as well they make great coffee on there I don't know if you've had a cup no I haven't it's really good and do they bring it to you they bring it to you nice lady on a hostess trolley and <laughs> it's cheap as well oh is it really it's cheap. how much yeah. for a cup of coffee it's forty dollars I was just having to think because 40 my NT wife is definitely comes. cheaper than a normal outside price that's and surprising for, and for me that's as good as Starbucks you know <laughs> yeah better right. than Starbucks <laughs> yeah right gotcha <laughs> yeah I guess we're not coffee connoisseurs or something right yeah, very interesting. I was just talking to Stephen about the whole transportation system in Taiwan. And I was saying back in the 80s, you had one choice, and that were the buses and the old rail system. And then we had the wild chicken buses came mm -hmm. along, the illegal things. Mm -hmm. But nowadays, we got these great big buses with lounge chairs in them. Well, they're taken from the airlines, aren't they? And they're really big, they're really nice, and uh, they work real well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, they're very, and they even get shout jays on there sometimes bring your tea. I, I, I've never had that. Yeah, I've gotten that sometimes. <laughs> Must be your, your good looks, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, this is the new, the new system. Wow, and so now I say in Taiwan we have the bus system, we have the new highway system, which is, you've driven on. Yeah. So what sure. do you think of the highway system? I, I, I'm really impressed. And you know, the thing that really struck me is when you talk to people maybe from Cambodia, from mm. Thailand, from some of the far eastern countries, and what they say is the big deal here is transportation. Yeah. You know, it means that you can get things around its infrastructure. Um, it's great to drive on. I mean, uh, you can get from city to city really fast, really easy at a competitive price. I think it's real good. It's great. And in fact, one of the most popular places people visit on the weekend are the highway rest stops. Oh, really? Yeah, That's yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know, yeah. you know? <laughs> Is this amazing or what? The highway rest stops in Taiwan. You've stopped at a few of them, haven't you? I, I have. They're real nice. They're, they're little, real nice. You know, they're really arranged well. Some and, have uh, little zen gardens in them and things like this. And some of them are really massive. And you just get whole families going there for the weekend. Yeah. So uh, this is the station. It looks real nice, real up to date. It kind of reminds me of an airport term terminal. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. And I was saying that you got your ticket when you got on. You didn't reserve a ticket? I didn't reserve a ticket. They, in fact, they keep, uh, I think it's carriages usually like 9 to 12, mm. non-reserved. You can just get on, get a seat. And uh, it's real convenient if you want to travel with someone, then you've got that opportunity to sit So you together. can always just jump on? You can always jump on, and you get a little bit of a discount for that Which is better well. than the normal rail, which you cannot always just jump on. Uh, you can't. Right? <laughs> right? Great. Any other impressions about the uh, high-speed high rail? I mean, I was... I took it the first time when I went up to Taipei a couple months ago. I was very impressed. And in fact, it went so fast, you know, I lost track of, it's easy to open up your notebook and all sure. of a sudden you're there, know. you know. It's exactly what happened to me today. I was like in a bit of a panic to get closed down and get off. You're in a rush. It's real, real quick, you know. Yeah. You're up in Taipei on the quick one, I think in under two hours from downtown. Yeah, that's what Stephen was telling me, all the way from Kaohsiung up to Taipei in a couple hours. That's it's real fast, it's real fast. And you can see here, like you say, I mean, it really feels like a, an airport terminal. It's really How about the service here. that you've encountered here? Because I know you've had some trouble with service at the regular train station. Yeah, I have to say, it's, it's pretty smooth. Um, getting the ticket is, is the, that, that's very good. The touch point where you buy the ticket is, is very smooth. Now they um, have ticket machines. Let's 
And they also have counters. I I've only used the counters. Likewise, yes. Mm -hmm. I, I've heard that the machines are a little troublesome. Funky, to be honest. Yeah, they, there have been some complaints about the machines. Yes, yeah. getting up to the ticket window, that's real smooth, and I've had no problems there. They even interact in, with you in English quite smoothly if you want, or Chinese, whatever your preference is. Hey, that's, that's real good. That's different than the regular rail too, because they have trouble with English sometimes, don't they? Have, they? they have this big sign that says English, and then they look at you with sort of big eyes and panic, and then you revert <laughs> to Chinese. Everything's kind of smooth. Yeah, you got to you got to give them a little bit of Chinese so they realize you're a, you can speak Chinese. And then it works out. So here, here it's real smooth. They've got that that sort of pretty much a bilingual kind of service. Yeah, I think they had a lot uh, more training here. Yes, yeah. it's, it's really impressive. I have to say. glitch points it's troublesome once you get up for your ticket mm. I don't know if you've noticed that but the ticket you don't just put in the slot you have to turn it right over it has to go in put it in, right it has to go in which, that special uh, way yeah. I, I've got my own sort of personal beliefs about why that is I think it's a local uh, ticket scanner and uh, one guesses that there are certain connections that influence that, that didn't work so, with that yeah you know, okay well that wraps it up I think we get a really nice impression of a real nice station mm -hmm really up to date and it fits in with the highway system the bus system yeah, really yeah. looks good doesn't it it does it looks so if you're going to come to taiwan you're going to really have some good transportation mm. on, on par with hong kong easily and easily way nice. better than china oh yes and I'm, better than america I'm, I'm i think actually. Bag life. <laughs> yeah well that's one little piece there right <laughs> it is, it is, sure. okay all right then we'll wrap it up this is talk of asian marketing with a special emphasis on localized chinese consumer behavior our website is ccc.qbook.tv, where you can find other audio and video episodes with photos, links, and information related to today's conversation. Subscribe to leave comments and access research episodes with applied topics and research reports.